We met at a party in London. Oh, we, we met on Saturday the 23rd of January 1965. Yeah, I liked, liked the accent and he was a <laughs> tall, tall, dark and handsome. Um... <laughs> not grey, not like grey as that. Yeah. We were married in 67 and then in 68 we set out to drive through to India on the way back to Australia. I just had no idea what I was letting myself in for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and we headed across Europe, through Turkey, Iraq, Iran, through Afghanistan, Pakistan, and down to Bombay. And uh, that's where I guess the travel bug uh, started for me. Last year, I got the urge to drive across Russia to London. I probably didn't know what I was letting myself in for again. Um... We were apprehensive about certain countries. We were warned that the Russian Mafia was everywhere. Uh, my closest friend was telling me I shouldn't go because of all the dangers. He said to Karis, well, if John's stupid enough to go, you shouldn't go with him. I couldn't let him go by himself. <laughs> so we shipped the Pajero that we had, 21 years old when it set out. And we had about 315,000 kilometres on the clock. And then we drove up northeast into Siberia. It, we, we felt now the big adventure is starting. The road deteriorated remarkably. The winter snows and ice had melted. It was very muddy, the rivers were high. And then it became very narrow as soon as we got into the mountains. In fact, it would be a one car width with a drop 50 metres into a river below. And that was one time when the tensions were a bit higher. In Mongolia, there are no roads, only a few tracks, no road signs, no petrol available. So it's uh, fairly hard work. A lot of it is desert or semi-desert. Back out into Russia, there were trucks bogged everywhere, trucks lying on their sides, no trucks could get through, the road was effectively closed. We may well have been stuck there, waiting for the weather to improve. It was very cold and the wind was howling. We didn't even set the camping body up properly. We just crawled into the flat air at the back. That was a miserable night. And uh, Gareth, you were in tears, really, weren't you? And you know, we're going to die here and no one knows where we are. <laughs> and then the sky, 30,000 foot above us, was some wretched jumbo. <laughs> I guess these people were drinking their gins and tonics and it was the ultimate insult when we didn't have a clue where we were. <laughs> The next day, we decided to give it a go. The uh, wheels went off the main centre timbers that they're supposed to be on, onto the lighter timber, and these started collapsing, and we thought we were going to disappear 20 metres into the rushing river below. Well, a couple of times it took us uh, as much as 17 hours driving in a day to cover 160 kilometres. That was rather stressful, and I guess each of us had to bite our tongue a couple of times there. <laughs> if I were not married to the uh, traveller, <laughs> um, I would never have done any of, any of this. We did uh, a total of about 29,000 kilometres over about five and a half months. So it was the longest time we've ever really, you know, condensed time that we've, we've spent together. We worked as a very good team. Whatever was sort of put in front of us, we managed to, to overcome. I was smiling with happiness and, and relief, probably. And I'm looking a bit glum because it's all over. <laughs> we both agreed at the end of the trip that it had been really good for our relationship. We, we, we got on really well. When I look back, there might only be a sentence or so in the diary, but suddenly the whole picture flooded back into my memory. And it's just the two of us. Forest and wild rivers, and mutual respect and love of each other, I think, there.